on this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. The Fall Play, Mr. Vandersteen, and Mr. Rossi. All this and more coming up next. Welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm your host, Alyssa Mulligan. This year's fall main stage play is She Kills Monsters. Merdula gives you a look into how the theater department is preparing for its debut. This year, Nyquist's fall play, She Kills Monsters, is a unique combination of a lighthearted story and a fantasy Dungeons and Dragons adventure. With the storyline of two sisters growing and learning from each other, combined with a unique cast of monsters and sword fighting action, this rehearsal process proved to be unlike a usual show. I think as like a cast we've kind of like experienced just like getting to try to understand how to like do things like stage combat because that's kind of new for us all. I mean some of us kind of know how to do it but um, I don't know I'm just kind of excited to see what that'll like end up at. Although it was a challenging concept and a limited rehearsal time, the cast came together to form a product that they are all proud of. I think it's the style and, and the, the fantasy element is, is, you know, like I say, something I haven't seen before. I, I think it's going to be, and so I think it's going to be exciting. I think people are going to have an experience. And when we go into the, the fantasy world, um, it, it's just cool. And we've got lights and we've got lots of sound effects and we've got smoke and we've got some pretty elaborate staging and, and, and stage combat stuff. and and we've got monsters showing up, and we have dragons appearing out of caves, and we've got things appearing and disappearing, and missiles and fireballs, and lots of, you know, things like that. So um, I think what's different is like, the spectacle that, that uh, this play uh, involves. Be sure to check out She Kills Monsters November 10th, 11th, and 12th in the main auditorium at 7 p.m. Tickets can be found at nvhstheater.com. And for Wildcat Weekly, alongside Murdua Natarajan, I'm Maura White. After the school year, a staff member that has been with NEQA ever since it opened in 1997 will be retiring. Sienna runs you through Mr. Vandersteen's legacy. Mr. Vandersteen is the head of the science department and an AP environmental science teacher. However, he is probably more well known for his time as the head boys cross country coach. He's in the Illinois Track and Cross Country Coaches Hall of Fame. And during his years coaching Nikwa's team, they've won 16 conference championships and three state championships. Coach Vandersteen started running at the young age of nine, and he started coaching kids while he was in high school because his father ran multiple youth track clubs in his hometown. He has coached cross country for 35 years, 27 of which have been at Nikwa Valley. The team has been so dominant because Coach Vandersteen has always encouraged his athletes to have fun, but also to work hard when it is necessary. I think Vandersteen really instills uh, an ability to enjoy your work at the same time as knowing when it's time to work hard. So that's something that I learned throughout my time at Nequa Valley. While running over 70 miles a week together, the guys on the team get to know each other well. Mr. Vandersteen has always emphasized the importance of teammates trusting one another. You know, just being on the team uh, with Steen and like all of the teammates and everything that we do together, uh, is like a really close bonding and it's like kind of like we're family. It has always been vital to Coach Vandersteen that he helps his athletes not only develop as runners but also as people. Trophies are important, don't get me wrong, okay? But I think he believes that the molding of, of those young men is, is so far superior of an accomplishment than, um, than titles, than a Hall of Fame. Looking back on his years spent coaching at Nequa, Coach Vandersteen hopes that above all else, his athletes will take away and remember the importance of being a good person. You can be nice, you can be a kind person, you can be somebody that uh, values the right thing, uh, and don't have to resort to yelling or screaming or cussing or, you know, being a jerk to achieve your goals. Thank you, Coach Vandersteen, for everything you've done for our school and our community. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Sienna McEnany. November is Native American Heritage Month. Mitchell gives you the details. With the schools in our district being located on former Potawatomi land, naming the high schools was a strategic process that was to honor those of the Potawatomi tribe. 
So they looked to um, what was some of the family rela relationships that Wabanzi had, and Nikwa was one that came up. Nikwa was a son of Chief Wabanzi, was a little bit of different of an attitude, uh, was a bit more um, of a disruptor and a bit more of a fighter when it came to trying to stand up for what he believed in. With the schools in the district being named after Potawatomi leaders, there's another factor that the district looked into as another way to honor those of the tribe. So when you have a land acknowledgement, um, it's taking an opportunity to acknowledge that they were the original inhabitants of this space that we now occupy. And if you pause in your you know, reflection to acknowledge the land, what you're doing is acknowledging that they were here first and also that their elders, both past and present, are still here. Um, and so again, our name, Indian Prairie School District, directly comes from the people of the Potawatomi. Take some time out of your day to reflect and honor those who inhabited this land before us. And make sure to stop by the display right outside of the main office. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Mitchell Vesta. What's up, Wildcats? I'm Miss Maney. Here's what's happening at NEQA between today and next Thursday, November 10th. Tonight is round two of the football playoffs against Lincoln Way East. Game is at 6 p.m. here at home. Be there. Congrats to the boys' cross-country team and also to Gretchen Leland from the girls' cross-country team who are headed to the state meet tomorrow in Peoria. Good luck. There is no school this Tuesday, November 8th because of Election Day. Athletes will be signing their NLI agreements on Wednesday, November 9th. The Veterans Day ceremony is this Thursday, November 10th during the school day. And the fall play, She Kills Monsters, opens that night. Also, make sure to put in an entry for the National PTA Reflections before February. Details are on the splash page. Lastly, National French Week is next week. So make sure to show your appreciation and get involved with the word of the day, fun facts, and anything else French. And that's What's Up Wildcats. Have a great week. Nico's very own Mr. Rossi has written a book this year and is ready to release it to the public. Hannah gives you the details. Over the past five years, Mr. Rossi, an English teacher at Nico, has developed his novel, The Doxing of Clearwater High. The, the book is about the stories that we tell and the secrets that we keep and what happens when the two get switched. A high school is, you know, 3,000 different stories taking place simultaneously where each person is the main so character a, of their story. A, and so the, the form that I finally settled on for the book is like that. Mr. Rossi values his story greatly as well as how his skills were put to use. I have a love for writing and this is me really putting myself out there and really taking that gift seriously. It took me a long time to really have the courage to take that part of me seriously and to really work at it. If I could go back and give myself some advice, I would just say, do it sooner. You know, don't wait. It doesn't matter if like, you know, only 20 people get this book, like, you did it. That's what I would say to myself. There are many stories to be taken away from this novel and it challenges a point of view that not many think of. There aren't a lot of books, surprisingly, that take a, a teacher's perspective. There are plenty of stories about doctors and lawyers um, and spies and cops because those you know, stories are exciting and fit a very clear narrative. But the life of a teacher, which is very dramatic because you're deeply enmeshed in somebody's life for nine months, doesn't always get to be this, you know, the center of a book. And so I really hope that, that the book challenges people to think about the lives of teachers and to think about you know, that we are messy human beings who dedicate ourselves to an important job. And in some cases, it's the best part of us. Make sure to purchase Mr. Rossi's book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Hannah Kestenberg. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. Have a great weekend, Wildcats!